-hmm. And then, I mean, uh, if, if you talk about Saint Emilion, I really like uh, ozone. Okay, I don't know that at all. I don't know much it's, about Bordeaux it's at all. One, okay. I think it's oh, one. Oh yeah, I know. That's, oh, you know that's a very high end producer. Finest, finest one, so uh -huh. like with Ozone and Cheval Blanc. But then there is yeah. stuff like La Dominique or Chateau Fourte, Clos Fourte. It's really good, Clos Fourte. And it's uh -huh. maybe less known. Cool, awesome. Cool. Okay. But anyway. That's so a little, little Bordeaux recommendation outtake ah, for you. Because you yeah. started? I yeah, didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, well I, I, I throw all this away usually, right? Okay. All the well, beginning. Just yeah. like, yes. You didn't know? Yep. Oh, Ali, bon, we start. And we will start, and you want to go this order, right? Yeah, okay. let's start here. Okay, hello internet, I'm Dan. And I'm Chaz, and this is Wine is Serious Business, episode 240. Got it right this time. We're here with one of our favorite shows we love to film every year. We're with our friend Isabel Dutart. Get the name right? Oh, yeah. Awesome. So All well. right, yeah. <laughs> I had to put myself on the spot there. But yeah, we, uh, we, we're tasting through the 2011 vintage of DuPont's wines. Um, Always terribly exciting because this is a producer that, that really got me excited about Pinot Noir when I was first learning about it. And so it's always a privilege to, to well, taste you. here with you. Yeah, so. Um, nice. Yeah. It's, oh, it's, it's still, it's true. Well, For it's both true. of us, you were like on the leading edge of the wines that got us kind of into collecting and kind of thinking, you know, thinking a lot about wine and feeling oh. a lot of that excitement. For, I sort just of, did know. that in my life. It's good. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm sure we're not the only one. Yeah. So it's, it's great that this relationship has lasted and we've been able to taste through your wines over the years and do the show. So, yeah. and really solidified my, solidified my love of like this hillside, right? There, there's some yeah. amazing fruit that comes out of these hills. Yeah. And there is in particular. something quite special here. Yeah. Just part of the Dundee. I totally agree. Yeah. 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 All right, so... No, uh, anyway, so just like this wine, we are not on the sale. It's no, a no. new vineyard we have uh, up to Carlton, so it's not in the AV appellation, it's just out of the limit. Okay. But uh, the vineyard is beautiful, a little bit more rocky than here, so really small clusters, small crop, I mean, really healthy, not a lot of pressure with rot or anything, and mm. it's just like, I mean... Right now, it's at the second vintage, 2011, and yeah. we are really happy with what we get. And I don't really care about the ABA. Sure. Awesome. You know? I think you've yeah. mentioned that. Yeah, I think you've yeah, mentioned that Yeah, the wine is yeah. good. So, uh -huh. And I think you... Yeah, huh? and I think, and, and just for contrast, how old are the oldest vines on the DuPont estate? Well, they were planted in 99, so uh, yeah. okay. 15. Yeah. And there, uh, they were planted in 07. Okay. So a couple different ways, but these are the baby wines. Yeah, that's so. a 2011, so yeah, it was a second crop. All right. Wow. Yeah, and the 10, the 10 turned out pretty good. It, I, I remember it being yeah, a no, really nice wine, so. Nice for and... mm -hmm. Good aromatics on this right away, I yep. think. It's... Absolutely. Well, well, that's typical of 11 vintage. You have a lot of spiciness. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we are not in like the really high high brightness, I mean, heavy right. uh, fruit, and like sometimes it's a little bit too much. Sure. But it's more like Burgundian, there is more spiciness, earthy, even a bit like tomato leaf. Yes, yes. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, it's... Do you, grow, do, you, do you grow tomatoes at home? I grow them here. Oh, actually, to pick it okay. up because yes. I have one red. <laughs> Excellent. My first one. Mm. Yeah, maybe some dark cherries, uh, a, yeah. little, a, a little, yeah. a, a touch of earthiness to really it. Really fresh. Finish. It's really, yeah. uh, it's bright nose. Uh -huh. uh, it's Absolutely. not something give you like this feeling of some of something heavy. No, no. It's more like oh. Yeah, good freshness to the nose. Yeah, absolutely. Have you enjoyed working Squeaky with, chairs. was 2011 a fun vintage to make? Or I, I remember it being a bit of a struggle. It was, I mean, this stuff I put in barrel the day of Thanksgiving. So, oh, wow. Yeah, so I told my boss tomorrow, you know, I have to come and put the last one in bar. I say, okay, I'll come with you. So he came and helped me. It was nice, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was quick, but it was for the fun. So remember, I mean, so yeah, I picked that like mm -hmm. November or something, maybe. Yeah, 10 very or late, yeah. yeah. But it was fun because uh, overall, I mean, the, I was quite happy with the quality of of the, the wine in, mm -hmm. in fermenter, so then, you know. It was a bit difficult when you see uh, October and you don't pick and yeah, like oh, you, yeah. Are, you are starting to be in your um, cycle, like, okay, you know, I, I'm 
falling down from going to hibernation for winter, but no, you didn't start. And so you know right. you have a bunch of work. It's really weird. Wow. But it uh, was fun. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it all worked out. It, it, it turned out good. yeah. On the palate, the, the freshness of the, the fruit on the nose extends into the palate. Um, definitely um, almost almost like to a tart edge to the, the fruit. Like there's a little bit of, of, of uh, very, like, very youthful fruit flavors here, not, mm -hmm. not leading into like more ripeness. Right? It's, it's not, not much there as far as ripeness is concerned. Yeah, I feel kind of like a little bit of grapefruit in the acidity. Yeah. There you go, yeah, like yeah. 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 Tart cherries, mm -hmm. I think. Um, yeah, and, and just and the tannins stay pretty light. They're like dust, kind of like dusty on the palate. Mm -hmm. A little bit of tannin it's, texture, but not yeah, too much. Yeah, the tannins are here, but they are not, you know. But I was a bit worried when I worried a bit with 11, late vintage, yeah. low ripeness. It's sometimes you get like tannins really hard. Oh, yeah, okay. You know, really like astringency. Really. Yeah, sure. sure. Yeah. And uh, so that's the style of one I'm not really a big fan. Mm -hmm. But no, finally, I mean, I think, you know, this vintage like that, you you don't have to push too much of weight. Yeah. You know, really be gentle. I mean, okay. when it's too ripe or not too ripe, it's the same problem. It's like you don't want over extract. Yeah. Well, in the past, I mean, you've done such a good job with tannins uh, in the past on all the other wines I've tasted from you that this this sort of shows some of that. Like there's, there is a sense of polish to it and the tans are never too abrasive despite the youth, youthfulness of the fruit and the way it's sort of uh, a little uh, exuberant initially on the palate. So it's, but uh, yeah. No, it's a funny because they have that nice roundness too, you know, they are not like, they, are, they have nice balance, they are not like thin or anything, they mm -hmm. are like really warm and. Yeah, but really, Really interesting fruit flavors, definitely tending more towards like tart cherries, maybe even like a bit of pomegranate. I, I like the, the grapefruit you had talked about. Mm -hmm. um, definitely the tartar, tartar fruit flavors here. Um, but, but really, uh, I, I wouldn't say the wine's overly tart, it's just it's, uh, the flavors are very fresh and very uh, youthful. So it's, yeah. it's killer. Yep. Very good. And definitely, and a little interesting contrast there too, I think Yamhill Carlton is that that area is usually associated with warmer vineyards and bigger wines and that's you know yeah. that's not that style it's still like light and fresh no absolutely not I think they can, do you want to rinse yeah if you want mm -hmm. i think they can age well and they are going to get better uh -huh, it's sure. like 07 you know uh you know they are going to yeah come back together and were you worried about tannins in 2007 as well they were really acidic Mm -hmm. Sure. So after bottling, uh, remember people tasting them. You know, I don't like when people taste my wine after bottling. The so next month, the next sure. six months. Yeah. When they were a little like, shock. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so, you know, one yeah. little time just gives gives them a break. Yeah. And uh, yeah, now finally, I mean, when you taste them now, I mean, and you know, it supports very well for aging. Mm -hmm. Acidity when you have no, not a lot of big tannins, that's really the support of the of the maturity and everything, and they are just better and better. This so mm -hmm. it's true. I agree. Yeah, we we've talked in the past about so seven and the way it got hit by the press, you know, and it's really oh, sad yeah. because now I mean, well, it's great for us. I got to purchase a fair amount of them, and now I'm really reaping the rewards because man, they're just drinking yeah. wonderfully. So. Yeah, no, no, I mean it's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so this wine, what are we drinking now? This is the, the Dundee Hill. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, right. This all 2011 except yeah. for the last yeah. one. And is this all estate fruit, or do you do you blend a little bit of this in there now, or no? It's it's all it's all from right here. Yes. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Oh, around me. Yeah. <laughs> what was I going to ask about 11? Um, oh yeah, it was. I've heard uh, some people, some friends of ours, compare 2007 and 2011, as in the way that the wines will possibly. Age with time. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. For me, they are really different. But uh, yeah, for the way they are going to move, sure. Uh -huh. But uh, you know, I mean, '07 we were quite ripe. Yes. We had a lot of rain, but the ripeness was here. Uh, '11, we didn't worry too much about rain. You know, like well, we had rain, but the first worry was ripeness. So right. you know, I mean, beginning of September. Everyone was worried. Everything yeah. was green. <laughs> That's scary. 15, not this year. Not 15th this. of September, everything green. I said, <laughs> gosh, you know? Mm -hmm. So, rain is the second worry. Yeah. The first one was to 
So it's, yeah, it's funny how they turn out, I mean. And the nose on this is just wonderful. Um, yes, that's... Really, yeah. really, uh, the, 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 there's, a, there's a, a, a way the wines smell from this particular area, and it sort of brings me back every time. I just love oh, the, yes. love the love aromas. Like yeah, it's, um, sort of a right, more, a little more ripeness here, yeah. uh, a little brighter red fruit characteristics, but there's like Definitely. a cinnamon or like a yeah, clovey really thing kind of coming out of it. It's spice. Very, it's yeah, very um, that smells just absolutely wonderful. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's almost, it, maybe it's just a, my imagination, but it reminds me of the earth here, like when you're here and it's all, it's all red, right? Yeah. And it's, it just reminds, like to see it and it's like, I feel like I'm smelling that, so. Yeah. A lot of like just nice ripe strawberry scents, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the same. I mean, the cinnamon have something like you cannot miss them. Mm -hmm. When you smell that, you say it's cinnamon. Huh? It's, it's really different from mm -hmm. any vintage. Even if you have still some characteristics, there is this spiciness, it's like brightness, it's something I love. It. And even when the wines are young, I think, with a lot that we've tasted, the, 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 the aromatics in the 11s definitely really are just like yeah, in your face right away. Yeah. I totally agree, yeah. You see how round they are? Yeah, yeah. They are really uh, round and yes. not heavy, but mm -hmm. they are not aggressive. I mean, it's... I really like the tannins on this one. They're yeah, definitely it's, present it's really um, but they but they are they, they are you know a bit round and they're integrated with the acidity. Like the, the structure is really well put together at this point. And it provides like a sense of firmness and body um, without being astringent or without being heavy, which you know, I think that's a great place for tannins to be. Yeah. That's that's right where I like them. I think and then, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, the intensity level of the fruit is is really nice and paired really well with the structure. I mean, like already showing decent balance. I mean, the structure is there and it's very firm in the finish, but there's a lot of intensity of flavor still there as well. Yeah, it's, and, uh, yeah. it keep you know coming. Yeah, yeah, it's almost evolves a little bit as you sort of go on. I mean, it, it definitely lasts in the mouth for a good amount of time. The finish is very long. Yeah. So yeah, it's. No, I'm happy with the 11. Yeah, I, I am too. <laughs> it's, it's really good. I yeah. just hope people will, you know, not be too impressed by the rating. Like, I mean, the overall impression of bad vintage. Mm -hmm. I think people are less susceptible to that now. Definitely yeah. the Oregon community. I mean, after after the turnaround of 7 and then 10s being what they were, 11 is definitely, it's a time for 11 to be received, right? Like if it showed up something like right after 8 or yeah. something. Yeah, 10 was the same. I mean, it was a late vintage and people were like, ooh, they are beautiful. Then. You know, 10s are, 10s just, we were talking about this outside. Like, I think 10 turned around and became my favorite vintage as far as oh, in bottle. They're just for me, beautiful. It's, it's the best vintage, one of the best vintage we, we get here. Yeah, your ten estate is a special wine. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> my estate in general. It's, it's always every yeah. year. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was talking about this blind tasting we did, and that really is a style of like of wine I like. The estate. Yeah. You know. Awesome. But well, anyway, well, mm -hmm. we are going to. Taste well, that's what we're going to go on to next. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah there's definitely a, a like like a mm. a lightness. And a brightness to the to the acidity. Like this is definitely like stronger acidity, I think, um, than than other years. So it has a nice crisp sensation to it. It's uh, like a bit this yeah. candy, you know, when you were little. I don't know if you have this candy here. I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> little bit of acidity, and they are really hard candy, and huh. you keep them you in mouth for like forever because it's really slow to. What do you relax. call it? What, what was the we candy? call that bonbon acidulé, but I'm not sure you can translate. No, nope, that's okay. <laughs> someone, someone watching this knows no, it sure by that name too. Is. So, so that's yeah, so fun to know. Share. Find it on the internet and point it out. Point it out the well, comments. Yeah, yeah, put us a link in the comment. That'd, that'd be, be cool. awesome. All right. So, talking about the estate, we uh, moving into it now. What what makes this wine your? I mean, I, I, I imagine for the. The estate bottling, you sort of try to stay to a, a style that is that you've been doing every year, perhaps. I don't then what, I mean, it's what just do you do like, different with this wine? Well, that's a selection of barrels, you know, estate and reserve from you know, Dundee, so from our vineyard here. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's, it's the one. It's the one who talks to me. Awesome. I, I mean, it's tough to explain. I, I'm not looking for... Uh, in the vineyard or in the barrel? In or barrels, in like barrel? right now, you know, I'm 
working on my plan for Estate and Reserve. And yeah. so Reserve it's quite easy because it's all the big guys, bigger, you know, more shoulder. I mean, I will not say masculine because I have nothing really masculine, okay. but more uh, body. But that one is, is more like, you know, sometimes you have this wine, they talk to you. I mean, it's just like the layers and the uh -huh. lens. Or For, it sort of forces you to take... Uh, complexity to or anything. Yeah. It's, and I know people like, you know, reserve because maybe it's bigger, but that's my style of wine. It's more, uh -huh. more elegant, you know, more than, than big. Yeah. But well, it's really cool that, they, you know, that you get to make this now every year, right? You've been making it since 07. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. At the so. beginning, I guess, oh gosh. And no, now I have pretty a lot of fun with this wine. Awesome. Yeah. And, and for those of you who don't know or haven't watched the show before, um, all of these different, uh, this is a different vineyard, but the rest of them are all different barrel selections. Um, they get yep. put into barrel, and she spends a lot of time tasting through and deciding yeah. which ones are going to end up in which one. have to do something. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because make it look like, <laughs> yeah, make it look it like, like you're working at least. Yeah. Try. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tasting wine's not, not no, so bad either. No, but sure, right because now. you know you don't do your blend like okay, I'm going to blend that, that, that. Because there is even in a lot, even if you have selected like four lot to five lot to go in the estate, then you taste barrel per barrel, and the, every barrel is different, so you have to find you know the one they match. So it's uh -huh. it's a long process. It's not like. A, you know, a three days process. You can just rely on it every year, right? Like, okay, these blocks and these barrels are just going to go together. It's not like that. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and do, you get a, do you have surprises every year too? Or like something when you I put it in I would say not anymore because oh, the right. vineyard is normally the same blanc come back every year, but the blend changes. Some year I put Van den in, some year I don't, some year I put more triple seven. It really depends on the vintage too, and you know, in a big vintage, I will go on something more a bit like refreshing to add. Mm -hmm. so, it depends. Sure, I suppose the colder blocks are more precious then, right? Because you have to, to, to balance the bigger I have not or... really a cold block. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. The block I don't like actually, you know, we sell them, so I make oh. clay with them. Sure. sure. Yeah. Well, the nose on this is, is I wouldn't say it, it, it. Obviously, it's a little similar because it comes from the same fruit. But at the same point, like there's more flor a much more floral aspect to this instead yeah. of being so spicy. Um, the cinnamon, or, or that I sort of detected on the previous wine, is a little dialed down, and there's a little more like a floral, almost yeah, like a rose petal like aromaticness rose, to this. Yeah, yeah it's, it's it smells just yeah. It's another another fantastic nose. So yeah, it's good. And I think there's just. Uh, it just feels uh, more expansive too. It feels a little a little bigger. I'm getting similar strawberry notes, similar grapefruit scents, but the the strawberries in particular, kind of like the fruit and spice, just kind of have like a you know more impressive feeling on the on the nose. I think. Mm. Yeah, everything more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The intensity here is dialed up. I would say just like a, at least for my my own palate, a, a notch from the Dundee Hills. Um, but it's much, it's much more linear. Um, they're, they're, uh, not to say there was gaps in the DuPont, but, or, or in the Dundee Hill, excuse me, but, um, it's, whereas that one may be evolved, like this, just, just the fruit is, is there, it's ripe and it carries on for a very long time yeah, without really any gaps. Long. Yeah, it's really long. I mean, that's the idea. And at the end, I think at the end you have something which is coming back to, you know what I mean? So you have like, okay, another layer. Something yeah. different, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just like, oh gosh. And perhaps it's the way that the, the fruit interacts with the acidity and the tannins as well. Like, there's a lot of intensity left over in the finish. I mean, like a good amount. It's, it's, yeah. I feel like there's like a little cherry pit flavor that hangs on underneath here. Maybe that's a little bit of the barrel, or do you yeah, do... Yeah, there is a bit of barrel. Yeah. There is more barrel for sure than in the, the Ponte. Yeah, and... and the deal. Yeah, yeah it's, not, it's not dominant. It's just right this little... And what, what I like is really at the end, it's a bit like if you use something like that. You know what I mean? Like it's a, just like something arrived like that at the end. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, the, the acidity, the way the acidity it kind of closes up with the tannins and the finish, and there's still a lot of fruit intensity there. It's almost like you just got to, uh, yeah. like uh, almost like when you're eating a dish you and you are, get yeah. a piece of like, like parsley or a piece of like cilantro in it, and it adds just a little burst of flavor. <laughs> there's something there in the finish, I, I would agree. Um, 
Adds just a, like a little bit of lift to the finish. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, really enjoying the length. Really enjoying the length on this. I think, I think some of those floral, like the like the rose petals that you were talking about, really kind of. Look, and that's made, really in burgundy really nice. style. Oh. Uh. <laughs> the roses. No, the wine. Oh, the, the yeah, the the wine. Yeah. I, you know, I I, I kind of think so, but I, I don't know. I still don't know much about burgundy. What I Chaz don't. and I. I bet I bet we drink. I, I, I try, you know. I bet we drink less than less. Well, definitely less than twenty bottles of Burgundy a year, probably. Mm -hmm. um, we're surrounded by so much good Oregon Pinot, and since we don't know much, it's intimidating, right, and expensive to learn about Burgundy. Yeah, there's a lot of expensive mistakes, you know. When you miss, you miss That's hard. That's the problem in Burgundy. You have to work with a producer, and more than with an AVA. So if you know sure. a good producer, I mean, whatever the AVA is going to have, is going to make a nice wine. Right. But if you want to buy, yeah, for sure, a Clos Bougeau, there is about 70, 70 different Clos Bougeau. And yeah, that's what I'm they have sure noticed. I'm not sure everyone is, you know, I mean, they are all the same quality, but... Right. Yeah. And it's popular enough now and expensive enough that not many places have it open for tasting too often. So, mm -hmm. so, so thanks to those of you who do, uh, but, but it's, it's, it's tough to educate yourself about it. Yeah, so. sure. Yeah. yeah. But for anyway. But take it from the expert. If she thinks it tastes like burgundy, <laughs> <laughs> you're in good hands. So, so what was the favorite year that you worked in burgundy? Some, oh, man, when the 85, 88, were well, great vintage. Fantastic. Uh, 88 was like, remind me a bit the 2008 in Oregon. So like, I mean, nice, good structure, a bit difficult early when uh -huh. they were young because they were really, I mean, but then they were good. 485 was a great vintage. Awesome. And were you excited about them at the time? Did you know right away, like, oh, these are going to be wonderful? Or is that something that... You do. You, yeah, you found I mean, you know time. it was good uh, yeah. right away. But, uh, yes, because after 84, you know, it was easy to have a nice vintage. 84 was really, really oh. difficult in Burgundy. Okay. So it was different. Cool. Yeah, yeah. no? Yeah. Okay. Lots of experience. All right. Yeah. So, the last of our 2011s, we're going to do the Baldwin Family Reserve next. So this is, an, again, barrel selection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't remember how many barrels. But <laughs> I change every year, you know. And this yeah, one's good. Stylistically, you're aiming at what when you make this wine? So yeah, more like structure, structure, and you know, the idea is more, more oak, you know, treatment to. Because the idea is to have something, you know, people can keep for a while. It's not normally yeah. ready to drink mm -hmm. now. Sure. And I would say that, that your lineup of 11s were one of the last ones to the market too, right? Yeah, like, I try not, I mean, I, yeah. Yeah, like you definitely make a point of, you know, kind of letting them come together and waiting till. Yeah, because, you know, I mean, yeah. one year ago they were like really close, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They start to open up a bit, but uh, it's and you don't, difficult to keep them. But and you don't do anybody f any favors. Well, maybe your account, but you don't do any any <laughs> anybody any favors by releasing them before they're ready, right? Because then, right, people yeah, who no. drink them are, are are disappointed, and then yeah. yeah no. So and you don't feel good about it. So it's good to let yeah, them no, go when they're ready. For so. sure, the it's, reserve is not ready. Yet. Yeah. It's, it's true. I mean, I know when I was first getting into wine, I didn't know any better. I tasted through, I, I was tasting through the 2007 vintage, right? Like very early. Like I was only been into wine for what, like a couple of years at that yeah, point? Yeah. And so the early impressions of 07s, because a lot of people released 07s that were yeah. green still. Like they, they wanted were, to like... I think the early 11s, some 11s were tough too. Agreed. Yeah. yeah, there was the, structurally, they just weren't integrated and the tannins were really outside of the wine. And um, yeah, and so I, I think it's... Yeah, if you guys have the ability to, it's not a bad thing to hold on yeah. to them and let them really come together. So, and Suzanne was telling me even that, that that like some people are frustrated, like they come to the tasting room and like, where are all the twelves? Yeah. And like, we have to wait, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, it's good for them to wait them. It is. Because, I yeah. Mean, I mean, they are good, but uh, they would be better in a year. So. Right, and so right, so that's the advice. Like, if you're out, don't don't feel rushed. Always try the new stuff. If the winery's pouring old stuff. Seize yeah. the opportunity because if, if, if they've not everybody can hold on to things till they think it's ready, right? Like it's you true. just said, the accountant likes it if you sell it right away, and and some people some people need to get it out the door. So, yeah. so take advantage of it if you can try some uh, some cellar aged wines. Well, anyway, the nose is nice. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's I'm sitting here, yeah, sitting here smelling it. It's, it's uh, a, a little darker in flavor yeah. uh, compared to comparatively to the last two wines. 
Um, I'm back to getting way more of the like the spice sort of like almost yeah, like pie. Yeah, more bourbon juice, so more like mm -hmm. you know, more like a little bit of ch chocolate like on the cherries, chocolate. maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like a little pie crust like or something. People say, "Oh, I don't like uh, New York," but when you give them one wine with New York and one without, they always prefer the one with New York. <laughs> This, Interesting. Yeah, no, well, no. and you're very, you're very good with your new oak too. You are. Do you, oh yeah. Do you want to give a public thanks to your? Who's your favorite barrel maker right now? Oh yeah, uh, Mercury, Tonnerie Mercury, and I work with Alari and uh, Rousseau. So it's three French. Yeah. Cooperage. Yeah. So awesome. and so she spent right. time working with the Cooper, one of the most knowledgeable people about the barrels that we talked to in the valley. So. You hear her talk about the oak percentages, and people are like, oh, that sounds like a lot, and you taste it, and you're like, oh. Yeah, it's no, not heavy. Mm -hmm. It's not strong. So. So yeah, a little, a little darker, um, a little spicier than the estate. Um, definitely, uh, yeah, just just darker. A little more, a little more brooding, a little heavier uh, scent. Like like your, my, my nose tells my brain that I'm probably getting into a bit of, a bit more intense wine than yeah. the last wine. So the acidity really keeps it light throughout the entire experience though and and lasts long on the finish i think uh, i think the flavors last for a long time and i really like how the acidity kind of frames uh frames the whole experience right wow i think the characteristic of every wine in 11 is this they are bright they are like uh, mm -hmm. alive wine you know they're not like heavy like yeah no like not at all or nine where you know what i mean just like bit like yeah. They are like, or six. gosh. <laughs> or six, yeah. Yeah, or six. Um. Yeah. But uh, they, they are like, and they just wait for food, you know. I mean, you imagine food with 11, it's, it's really great because it, it's all together. I mean, I don't know. It's just a style of wine. They are not heavy. I don't like any wine. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, not for Pinot. I was going to say, yeah, like, do you feel yeah. that way about your, yeah, your Rhone mean, wines? Yeah, or no. Okay. I mean, Sierra is a different yeah. idea, but. Mm. Or cab or anything, but uh, Pinot is not what you expect, you know. Mm -hmm. or, I think. Yeah, I've enjoyed some that are heavy, but I think usually they they feel pretty awkward. I think if they're not. Just yeah. have to drink a bottle. Yeah. When it's too heavy. Mm, agreed. No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> physically. No, no. no even uh, <laughs> even it's like. It, it's it's tough to drink more than you know that because then it's a bit like too. Uh, Acidity or, or oh, just like just too, too, extracted or oh, yeah, extracted. Okay. Too, I don't know. Yeah. Disrupt that like a bit like hmm. you want something else. You know, you want something refreshing. Yes. Yeah. It depends, still, depends on the kind of night I'm having. So <laughs> anyway, I still feel like this has some good bright character, even though that yeah, like the the fruit's a little darker, right? There's, Absolutely. You taste the barrel yeah. more. A little bit more tannins, but I mean, they have nice tannins. It's fine. So. I agree. Yeah, def definitely nice thing. Yeah, structure structurally definitely more powerful, right? Mm -hmm. Like a little a little more there. But uh, the flavors are completely fresh across the board even though they do have a darker character, maybe we're like more like blackberries. Seems yeah. like your tannins here are always pretty well managed. Like I don't think I've had a single wine here where I thought the tannins were rougher, stringent. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that's partly your style that you don't you know, that you like to keep your wines clean that way, but do you think the site contributes a lot to the tannic character of the wines as well? Or is that more work, like decisions with harvest I and winemaking? I think wine uh, winemaking is a big part of, you know, like extraction. Sure. And tannins are a big part of extraction. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm sure you can make bigger tannins with this vineyard if I was pushing a bit more. But, um, you know, if for sure, Dundee is maybe one of the less, you know, square, big, so I don't know, but um, yeah. yeah. I'll do a little rinse on this one. Um, so, what have you had recently from your guys's from from Dupont wines, um, as far as back vintages that you've drank recently that was drinking really well? Anything oh, yeah, that you can drink. recently? I, I mean, I know the O5s are starting does, to drink really well. I'm not my boss because he knows better than me when ah. <laughs> after they are in bottle. But uh, yeah, yeah, O5 drinks they drink well. Yeah. It was a while ago now, but we had an O4 that was really enjoyable. Yeah, I absolutely. Thought, I thought that was that was a really nice wine. Yeah, no, O5. O4 right. was really long to come together. 
Oh really? It was it was tough on re on release even. Or? I don't know. It was like a wine. It was like not together for a while. But I okay. mean, talking huh. for yeah, years. Sure. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah, now, last time I had it, I mean, I think it was with you when we had the yeah, vertical. we did the vertical. That was so yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, this time, I mean, I liked it so. Mm -hmm. Great. It was one of my favorites of that tasting. So. Which one? The five. It was one of my favorite. Two, two. Yes, it was either the two or the one. The one was nice, huh? Yeah. That was first I can't vintage. remember. Veronique's ones that I've had have been really nice, too. I think you're right. Yeah. I think it was two. I feel like that's a good... Uh, uh, Two-seven-one? Yeah, a one Lorraine, yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. So, I've, so I've been, I, I think those wines have aged pretty well. The, the ones have aged pretty well. Mm. That was it. It was two, five, and eight were my three favorites. Yeah. Mm. So, anyway. Mm. So, uh, we're stepping back a vintage for this wine. Uh, a couple years ago, we did the 09, and it just wasn't ready to go right out of the gate. Yeah. So, we did the 09, uh, Shirley's Grand Reserve, last year, and so we're doing the 10 this year. Mm. And uh, I think it's a good move, right? This is always the last one in bottle. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. it, I keep him two years in barrel, so basically, it's bottled a year after his friends from the same vintage. So, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. it makes sense we taste them. A year after, you know, too. So, I know. Right. It's, it's two years in barrels. It's mostly 100% New York. Mm -hmm. So, what I do is normally, you know, this time of the year, maybe August or September, it depends when harvest are. Um, I blend my, because I make like two barrels. So, I blend them and I put them back in uh, one year barrels, try to put a little bit down the New York. Sure. Mm -hmm. But still, it's. Still, you know, a lot of still plenty, but you'd be doubling on it if you, right, if you went from new to new. No, right? I could leave them in their new, you know, sure. but for example, now I'm going to pass them in a 2012 bar. Sure. Okay. But, um, yep. Darker color no, on this one right away, too, I think. This just yeah. smells awesome. <laughs> this just smells so good. Yeah, I mean, the oak is not so present, you no, know what I mean? Yeah. It's, I'm, it's weird. I'm terribly surprised. I mean, I, I, I've, I've had this happen every time. I, yeah. Your wines don't show a lot of new oak, but yet it's... And it's funny because when I taste the 12, which is in Bowen, still, you know, I mean, right now, this time of the year, they always taste really weird. They mm. taste like they start to dry a bit. And huh. for the first year, I, I, we start to make sure in, uh, it was 2005, no? That sounds five, right. Yeah, yeah, five. Yeah, five. I didn't That's make any in six because I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I um, liked it. <laughs> uh, anyway, so um, every year, I mean, you know, the, the summer, I don't taste them so well. And then mm -hmm. they, poop, they come back and, huh. mm. I don't know, I don't stress anymore. Uh, uh, and boy, it must be nice to have been doing this long enough to have that confidence, too, that when you taste it, when you taste it on the downside, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, I don't know, what's going to happen? Yeah, thinking about that, at least not being in the industry or having done that, I mean, to have that on your shoulders and like, oh, got to make this decision. Or well, well, I hear about the guys it's who incredibly are, stressful. <laughs> who are, you know, small independent wineries that are, you know, they buy their own grapes and they only, you know, they only make a thousand cases a year or something like that. And they're having heart attacks, right? They taste it going through that down phase like, what am I going to do? I think the <laughs> day you I have do? kids, you understand. It's like kids, you know, sometime huh. in their life they are like, really easy and then mm -hmm. they're like gosh <laughs> <laughs> but you know it would change so i think wine is the same you know it's mm -hmm. something alive yeah so it, it changed it changed from the beginning to the end kids teach you patience wine making teaches well, you patience i'm not sure it teach oh. me patient, but <laughs> <laughs> they definitely test it right so <laughs> yeah. so yeah the, the the nose on this is just um Definitely, I mean, it's got, it's got uh, how, where do I even some start? Some power. Some barrel, yeah. Some power, I mean. Some oh, some power, power yes, yeah. some power, absolutely. Mm. Um, definitely a lot of the spice coming out of it that I've gotten in some of the previous wines. Uh, way more floral, and I, I, maybe it's power of suggestion, but the violets um, that you had suggested early, uh, earlier are sort of showing to me, or possibly something else. It's just very, very floral uh, on the nose. Um, violets awesome are a real fruit. signature of 10 for me. I felt like a lot of... A lot of wines had had like kind of distinct violet character, so yeah. including including yours, yeah. yeah. So yeah, the, the way this yeah, smells is just killer. A bit of jasmine, even sometimes they have. Yeah. Mm. But this underlying sense of like really nice, like nicely ripened 
like blackberries mm -hmm. or, or yeah. something underlying yeah. all of that, right? Like there's like a, it's not, so, yeah, wow. it's, it's ripe, but it's not overly ripe in any way. It's like just, just really nice. It smells wonderful, so. Yeah, no, it's like to be in a garden. It is. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's close a good, your eyes, you are in a garden. Mm -hmm. Good complexity, right? Just yeah. lots, lots of things to think about all the time. Good wine yeah. can do that to you. It can literally put you in another place. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. This, yeah. that's extremely pleasing. <laughs> the, yeah, the barrel is definitely there, but this this, yeah. this core of acidity. Good, huh? what, 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 yeah, good. I think it's delicious. <laughs> 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 yeah, this core of acidity is so nice, and it just lasts for so long, right? Mm -hmm. You've got some of these darker flavors, a little bit bigger fruit, a little more barrel. Yeah, but the acidity keeps it bright and pure, and uh, it. it and engaging, and the fruit flavors I think remain complex. You get some of those dark cherry, uh, dark blackberries. You get some cherries. Um, like a whole bouquet of fruit. Yeah. I mean, there's really a lot there. A lot there. Um, but the texturally, this wine is awesome. Like the the the, the uh, don't really don't really have another word to describe it. Yeah, the volume. Te I think the volume. You know, in in mouth, it's just like yeah, the way it's it like feels. you have something like. You know yes. what I mean? It just there is a lot of volume in the wine. Right. More like in you know the reserve is big, but it's different. But that is just like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's, this, it takes this volume, I think, with all the flavors and everything, you know, <laughs> champagne and. And, and it's, do you worry about it being heavy? Like, do you have to watch the acidity more carefully with this, or it just? It, yeah. I normally together. manage quite well the acidity. Yeah, I, well, I agree. I mean, that's I think part of what we <laughs> but, love about uh, it. Yeah, no, I mean, if, if I like it, if I don't really look at what's the value oh. of the acidity. Okay. I think really it's all a question of balance. You know, more you have tannins, mm -hmm. more you have alcohol, more you have acidity. If you have low alcohol, you low tannins, you maybe will need low acidity. You know what right. I mean? But it's just a question of balance. So. If you like it, what I mean, just right. like whatever it's a value, who cares? Mm. No? It's the same for the white. I mean, sometimes it's uh, and well, not too much to be too uh, you know strict with like chemistry stuff. Right. Well, I mean, if, if if the fruit can support the acidity or or the 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 intensity or the volume can can support that, then who cares, right? Like if yeah, the balance no, is there, the balance is there, and this is. All there. Like, I know 10 like and 11, the they had quite high acidity. I mean, they have low pH, so which means they are, mm -hmm. you feel the acidity more. You know what I mean? But, sure, um, sure. Uh, I mean, they need that. It's like it's like the structure. I mean, it's like a skeleton for a wine, too. There mm -hmm. is tannin and acidity. So, well, I don't know the acidity on that one, but. Where it hangs its meat, yeah. <laughs> but this and, and this wine is is definitely um, the the intensity of it is is just wonderful. The texture is just wonderful. Um, God, I wish I could I wish I could give more complex terms than that, but I'm really kind of taken back by it. It's just this is one of my I mean tens tens are really wonderful for this ability to deliver power without being too too heavy or uh, or overwhelm your palate, and this this delivers all of that. So it's it's a wonderful 2010 wine. I think that's so. a compliment. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I get this. These are the tens I get excited about, and and rightfully so. Great. This is this is awesome. So yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And what are you? Uh, what are you, what are your thoughts about the uh, early and sunny and warm year that we've been we've been having so far? Yeah, right, because last year was the same. Everybody was like, "Oh, we're going to pick in August. It's going to be like that." It's, it's going to be too hard, so we have to leave more food and what and finally. I mean we had rain and you know, was not so everything depends on the last three weeks. Okay, yeah, so we had some rain this week, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean imagine we have this this weather like that like for since like mid August to mid September. It's not going to be so early, so mm -mm. you never know. Let it go. Yeah. I decide not to stress before September. Okay. That's a good plan. Yeah. I look and I say, okay, I mean, it's beautiful outside. And what do midsummer rains like this do for to a? To I think it's your... good for. I mean, you know, I mean, it's a plant. 
So yeah. your, your friends are happy if you put the vineyard is happy too. Awesome. Okay, yeah, I always you wonder. Know, it's I mean, just it's, like it's, before the horizon, I mean, well, except air, which is that really stressful, but um, a little rain like we are, no, I think it's good. Okay. Keep a little bit of uh, water for the people playing. <laughs> yeah, 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 and they Keep need it. Happy. I'm sure they were happy, yes. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Help yields out, I guess, too, right? Okay, People be able yeah. to keep more fruit. That's nice. Mm -hmm. That's well, nice. I think it's nice now, but you know, it, everything can change so quickly. So sure, awesome. You never know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's less stressful than eleven when you were like, you know, start to have the break in June or something like that. It's a bit weird. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was scary. Yeah. I was worried. I don't even have or, or any money, less, and I was stressful. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, it was stressful because like it's really late. Yes, you know, sir. It was like two months late than normal, so that's, uh, that's a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no. But all that hang time turned into some decent wines, right? Yeah, Those but grapes got to hang. You a long know, time. I mean, in, in the 1993, 94, I mean, we pick beginning of September, you know, I mean, it's not something. Wow. Were you working with the uh, drone? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. It was like in 92, they pick uh, end of August. So it's not the first year they are mm -hmm. early, and then wow. 93 and 94, they are beautiful wine in Oregon. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I've had, uh, I don't know if I've had any from, I, I, I should seek some of, had I've had very good experiences with 95s. 97s, but I'm Which is what, 95, more, a little bit more wet. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 3 and 4 were great. That was what I was going to ask too, was about this specific site, um, in like years like 11 where a lot of people struggle to ripen grapes like d does this vin does this vineyard and this site suffer from similar woes of the rest of the valley or do you, you know what, ripen it quite, a bit easier here yeah it's an early it's an early it's an early vi uh, vineyard here and okay. often you know i mean yeah i pick quite early okay so, so 11 was a, a yeah. while, while stressful maybe it, it came together Okay, I mean, I still end, pick yeah. like end of October, but uh, yeah, yeah. mid October or something like That's that. That's still really but, late, uh, yeah. Yeah, but uh, you know, it's an early uh, vineyard, and uh, some blocks are a little bit late, but um, it depends of clothes too. Have you been drinking any Pinot Noir from uh, parts of the world besides Oregon and in France at all? Have you tried any? Right now, uh, you must be like that. No, like in the last that. year or so, I don't know. If, if there isn't any on the top of your mind, that's fine. But I thought. Uh, I drink my French Pinot Noir because they make a lot, but... Uh, sure, <laughs> sure. <yeah. laughs> no, I suppose there's so much good stuff. Friends from Oregon or friends from France? Yeah, from friends from Oregon. Oregon. Okay. I like wine from Kelly Fox. I mean, she makes beautiful mm -hmm. wine. She really does. Boy. Good stuff. Yes. It's cool that you, you two are friends, too, because I think you both can put the same kind of love into your... Yeah, I mean, I love her wine. Yeah. 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 Good stuff. Oh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, that's the lineup. Uh, is there any question you'd like to ask the viewers yeah. before we wrap up? We forgot to we forgot to prep remind you. For that. Yeah, prep we'll you, for that, you, yeah. can give, you can think about it for a while. Oh, for a while. The tricky question. Yeah, I know. Yep. Uh, ask so them anything. You have to ask Which a question. One? Yeah. Oh, I have nothing in my mind. That's okay. So I don't that? remember what was the previous one I asked. So you don't mm. want to ask the same one. No, I think it's. No. Uh, you can talk about kids. You can talk about horses. You can talk about. <laughs> you can talk about World Cup. You can talk about anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah World Cup. So we, we missed it. So IPNC. Yeah. <laughs> we all missed it. <laughs> we all missed it. <laughs> uh, no, I have no question right now, but okay. I will work on That's that right. for next time. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll do better at preparing you for it next time. <laughs> yeah. uh, thanks everybody for watching. Thanks thank again you. for coming on, taking the yeah. time to do this thank show. You yeah, so. Thank you for tasting my wine. Uh, always enjoy it. Yeah, it's always, always great hanging out with you. So we'll see you guys next time. Thanks see for you. watching. Bye. Cheers.